How's it going everyone? So iOS 18.5 RC is officially released and what this basically means is to release candidates. In other words, this is the final version of iOS 18.5 that will become available to the public and next week or so. So in today's video, I'm gonna go ahead and share with you all the upcoming features and the current features available for the developer beta, as well as the public beta in the next few hours or possibly the next day is when this should become available to the public beta. So with that said, let's begin by going over compatibility lists. So long as your iPhone can support iOS 18, nothing changed here. Now, before we get started with these new features that got added, I'll be sure to include timestamps of everything in the description down below for your pleasure. Let's begin. So here we are. This beta did came in a large, almost eight gigs about for an iPhone 16 Pro. And then we have it installed right here on our main device in general. Software update. And there we go, iOS 18.5. So one of the new changes can be located in actually the settings tab. You see in here, if we scroll down into the general tab, there's now an Apple care and warranty section. This has been redesigned because as soon as we load right here, it'll give you all the additional information from all your Apple warranty status. If it's eligible or not, or it's limited warranty like my iPhone 16 Pro. I know it says 15, I accidentally renamed it 15 Pro just to keep it compatible with my vehicles. But here you can actually like actually go in and, and see what it covers and what it do doesn't cover. And you could talk directly to Apple support from here. So this has been totally redesigned with a new logo over here on top from Apple. Now, if you have the back tap functionality enabled on your iPhone, when you tap the Apple logo three times, it will do like an action. You can have it so there's a banner that will pop up automatically. You see, by going into, let me start over in the setting tab and you scroll down into accessibility and you go down to touch all the way on the very bottom tap back tap right you can enable a banner to actually appear now whenever you do an action so now if i tap three times a little status will pop up telling us that back tap has been enabled so we have the new show banner ability right there and for back tap again it's like a shortcut that you can enable based off tap motion from the internal sensors where you can have it to do other things like open up app switcher, camera control, flashlight, home, take screenshot, and it just goes on and on. But now you Apple re-enable the banner functionality, which was a part of the beta of iOS 18.4, and now they permanently added it. Now, since we did enter Pride Month, if we lock our device and we long code, and we go all the way to the far right to add like a wallpaper, we go down, here's the new Pride Month wallpaper that we receive. Apple typically releases a new one every single year, and this is the design on this new one right here. It also applies on the Apple Watch as well. If your watch is on the latest version of watchOS, by long coding and going all the way to the far right, and you'll see it featured right here on the new watch phases. And here it is, the new Pride Month. It supports one complication, and uh, that's basically how it looks like. Not a bad design but very limited on customization. And over here, if we turn on always on display, if your iPhone supports it, this is how it looks like. It's pretty nice, definitely a lot different. And it does shift be between different designs as you're seeing it do right there. Now, real quick, if you've been enjoying this video so far, if you could take two seconds to hit that like button on like, that would be truly appreciated because I like to keep these videos powered by you guys, the viewers, which is why you don't see sponsorships, segments, taking like a minute or two off your time to try to sell you like a VPN or some type of nonsense subscription. So thank you to those that continue hitting the like button like and continue supporting the channel that way. Now let's carry on. Now the next new change can be located in your mail app. You see, by launching the mail app, I'm going to have to cover this up because uh, personal information, don't want to leak anything out. But I don't know if you can see this, there's a little glance right here on the, t on the right side showing us that there's some additional options over here. So that's been tweaked and added. Additionally, if you tap these dots next to the select, you now have the ability to show contact photo or no contact photo. So that's a few mail enhancement features we receive for the default mail app. The next new feature can be located in your photos. By going in photos, if you go into our most recent deleted, originally we were supposed to have a recover all a feature right here enabled, but it looked like Apple took it out. Not sure why it was working fine when it was available during the betas, but it's not officially over here. So it looks like this is coming out in the next version of iOS. Not sure if it's gonna be iOS 18.6. Most likely this will be a feature available in iOS 19, unfortunately. So that's been removed and doesn't look like Apple has any plans on putting it back. 
And then if you live in the UK, Message via satellite should be available in some regions over there now. So that's pretty cool. It's now becoming available worldwide. So if you don't have cellular connection, you still are able to get a hold of emergency dispatchers or communicate to somebody in case you just don't have any reception whatsoever, thanks to satellites. Additionally, there's a new feature that got added for Apple Screen Time. You see, if we go all the way to the very bottom right here in the main menu on our settings, scroll down to Screen Time, right in here, you will now get a notification when a shower uses a Screen Time passcode. So now we'll be actually listed right here, you can monitor that. And then in the Apple TV app, we now have a buy with iPhone, which means you can now purchase content that's not strictly available on the Apple TV with just your iPhone. So if we're buying something on here for on a third party device, you now can. And then in terms of Starlink ability, like T-Mobile right now does support Starlink capability. I used it on my iPhone. This is now compatible on the iPhone 13s now. So not just the 14, 15, and the 16s, but now the iPhone 13, even though they don't have the hardware, they should be able to connect to a Starlink satellite in case you need internet reception, in case you're off the grid. And then a feature that hasn't been released but we were really thinking about it will become available on iOS 18.5. Unfortunately, it is not. Because as soon as I plug in this device to charge, there was rumors that it will display like the time to charge 200% on the very bottom, like it would on other smartphone manufacturers, as an example. If I take my other daily phone and I go ahead and plug this in, it'll actually tell me the time it will take to fully charge this device. Unfortunately, Apple is working on this, but it doesn't seem like it's available on iOS 18.5. Rumor has it it's likely to become available on iOS 19, unfortunately. Now, in terms of performance, let's go ahead and run Geekbench real quick, and let's see what kind of performance numbers we were getting from the previous beta versions to the new RC version, see if they improve the performance. So I'm gonna run Geekbench and we'll be right back once this is done. All right, and here's our results. And let's take the temperature gun before we start cooling off. We reached a temperature of 98, 98, 97 Fahrenheit, it looks like. A bit on the hot side, but these are our numbers. Let's go ahead and see what was the previous results. If we go on history, so beta 4, here are those results, 34 and 84. Uh, 30, ooh, we kind of lost numbers. So this lets me to believe we will probably see an RC2 get released sometime next week. So the official version might be released in the next two weeks. Uh, not my most favorite numbers, and in my room is not really that hot. So we did lose some performance numbers, which is kind of disappointing. Uh, I'll keep you in touch for the next video update if I experience any bugs or something like that, but personally kind of disappointed those were the results. And there you guys have it. Those are all the new stuff that got added on iOS 18.5 RC. So if you're on the beta or not, or you just like to be up to date on what's coming out in the future for everybody else, now you know. But the release date to the public for other iPhones should be hopefully next week. I'll keep you updated in the comment section if I have an exact time or a closer estimate. Other than that, there you guys have it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you wish to watch more, check out these two videos over there. As that's my most recent video and the video down there is a video that YouTube is recommending specifically for you. Thank you so much for watching.